Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and recently I've been looking for something outside of Photoshop to draw my webcomic in. A lot of you had been suggesting Clip Studio Paint, and so today I'm going to be drawing the next page of my webcomic um, that I actually will upload alongside all the other pages in Clip Studio Paint, a program that I've never used before. And then I'm going to compare it to Photoshop and see how it stacks up. So just to make things clear, I am using the EX version of Clip Studio Paint. There's two versions, including EX and Pro, and it sounds like Pro is actually the one with less features, so I went for EX just so that I'd have the best chance to have a good time with this program. Now, Photoshop is notoriously expensive, and Adobe recently raised the price of their subscription service to Photoshop, so I feel like a lot of people are going to be looking for other ways to make their art and their comics. Now, the good thing about Clip Studio Paint is it was actually originally called Manga Studio, so the whole thing is really designed to make comics. Now this was really surprising to me um, as someone who's been using Photoshop and forcing it to sort of work for comics because there were so many things built into this program that made it very clear that they wanted you to make comics on it and just made it very convenient. So that was the first good point for this program. The first frustration I had with it though is the fact that there is no way to just hold shift and then drag for a straight line. Now this is a small nitpick, but um, there are a few different ways that you can make panels in this program, one of which makes a vectorized panel that you can actually have a fill behind, which is interesting, but not something I would want to use. And there's also um, clicking, holding shift, and then you see the line sort of coming out of your cursor, and then you click again and it makes a generated straight line. Now, there's a subtle difference between having the computer hold your cursor straight while you actually use it versus having the computer make up a line between two points and that is that you can't freely adjust the uh, weight and the pen pressure while you're drawing the line so it did make my lines on this page when it comes to the panels a little bit less um, exciting looking and then have a little bit less character which is something that really bothered me however on the positive side again um, being able to import your own custom fonts is a make or break feature for me when it comes to my comics and I actually found that my pre-made font was already built into the program because it was just pulling all the fonts that were already installed on my computer right into the program so that was super convenient now originally I was just going to try to use the trial version of this because the full uh, EX version of this program is uh, over $200 and I didn't want to buy it without trying it, but it seemed like almost every feature that I was going to need in order to work on my comic were locked behind the limitations of the trial, so um, I just had to uh, suck it up and give it a purchase. Um, so I'm really hoping that I'm going to end up liking this program, otherwise I just wasted like 200 bucks. But again, compared to the monthly subscription cost of Photoshop, it's really not too much. So if this is able to completely replace it, it's actually somewhat of a deal. Now, there were a lot of little um, customizing things that I wanted to do when I opened the program up. I changed the default text size and font to the one I always use in my comic, and I also adjusted how sensitive the um, pen was to pressure because it was a little bit too even the way um, it came sort of out of the box. And that makes a lot of sense because obviously manga and anime art has a much lighter touch generally when it comes to pen pressure differences, whereas really cartoony Western art often has that like more dramatic thick line kind of inking. Um, so that's one of the things that I did adjust right off the bat. And I still feel like there's more that I'd like to change regarding the pen pressure because I still feel like I was straining a bit to get the kind of line variation that I tend to like in my comic. There are also some very smooth pens and not a lot of texture even on the textured pen. So compared to the inking thick and thin pen that I'm used to using, it was definitely smoother than I was accustomed to, though I didn't mind it too very much. The inking features in Clip Studio Paint are probably my least favorite in comparison to Photoshop, largely because the pens that come with the program are all largely very similar, and you have to mess with them a lot to get the kind of variation I like. Also it appears that most brushes, um, or most pens that is, that they have in the program automatically add a sort of fake flick at the end, so they all taper off, regardless of whether you actually did that flick in real life, um, which can make it a little harder to control, even though it might be easier for for a beginner who has trouble with those flicks, if you're used to doing them by hand, it can be kind of weird to see the program doing it for you, and sometimes you really don't 
don't want it to do that. So it's something that bothered me as a personal preference kind of thing. Though I should mention that I looked it up and it looks like it's actually pretty easy to make custom brushes in this program. So if this was seriously something that I wanted to approach as um, my long-term solution for making web comics, I would think I would be able to make a reasonable dupe of that inking thick and thin brush in this program without too much trouble. It's really the customizable elements of this program that make it seem so possible to replace Photoshop. It's one of the things that makes Photoshop really helpful is that even when they leave features out, um, usually either a modder or even just the user can figure out a way to build brushes or tools or scripts to get done whatever job they need done. And I do think that looking um, at a lot of tutorials for it and things like that, it seems like it has a lot of that flexibility that makes Photoshop so useful. And I should say that if you're doing more detailed art, or especially anime or manga style art, this program is pretty much pre-built with that in mind, so you might find that it's basically perfect for you if that's the kind of style you get, like to use. Another thing I want to make really clear right now is that um, no matter what program you use, when you first open it, if it's not working quite right for you, um, don't immediately panic and think that the program's not good because in every drawing program I've ever used, especially Photoshop, I've found that I've had to make a lot of adjustments to basically every setting to make sure that it's actually a good tool for me. And um, that involves things like moving around the workspace so that all the windows that you need are actually open and then you close all the clutter that you don't need and uh, changing pen pressure, all of this stuff, it's very standard for a program like this. So um, it's definitely not something I would consider like a con of the program. It's just sort of something that you almost always have to do. I think the only program that I've ever used that I didn't feel that way was probably like Paint Tool Sci. Um, I feel like that program is so, so friendly to the user right off the bat. But um, since I use Macs, I can't really use Paint Tool Sci. And I also believe that um, I think it's abandonware at this point, like it's not being updated anymore so I think uh, it won't be usable forever because they can't keep updating it um, which is really a shame because yeah it's one of those drawing programs I actually really love to draw in um, but anyway I'm getting a little sidetracked so um, I'm almost done with the inking on this page and about to move to the coloring and I do want to mention that I'm gonna do the coloring in a sort of normal way um, like I used to when I was doing this comic in Photoshop because I don't want it to look drastically like different from the other pages. Um, that can be a real issue when you're reading a comic and you notice like s sort of changes in the way that it's starting to look randomly throughout the pages. That can really break up like a reader's experience. However, I am actually going to color it twice um, because lately Clip Studio Paint has sort of been getting more attention because of this auto colorize tool um, or it's kind of like a script or a setting. And it basically instantly colors your line art um, without you really having to do anything. There's two different versions of it. One where you give it hints of where you want the color to go, like you just put down blobs of the color that is right, and then it will fill it out to the uh, inked lines that it sees. Or there's a version where you literally just click auto colorize on your line art layer, and it will just color it um, through, I guess, magic or something. Um, it's something that I had never tried before, uh, and I really don't automate most parts of my work so it was something that I really wanted to check out just because it takes me so long to make these comics um, and especially since I started doing two videos a week on my YouTube channel I've been really looking for ways to speed up the comic process so I don't have to miss updates um, on Unfamiliar anymore so yeah that was something I was really excited about when I downloaded this program and it's one of the reasons I decided to actually purchase it rather than um, trying to make the trial work and you know trying to work around stuff like that I just really I think that this program has a lot of potential and I wanted to give it a real honest shot. So now that all the inking is done, I took in a random panel from the most recent chapter and I just started sampling colors from that little panel and it was very easy to add swatches. It was just like Photoshop, like pretty much identical. So I just used the eyedropper tool everywhere that I needed to pick up the color and um, put it into the swatch set. And I should mention, if you are someone who is using Photoshop right now, a Clip Studio has a lot of overlap with Photoshop, so it won't be very difficult for you to get used to this new program if it's something that you want to try out. Most of the shortcuts on the keyboard are exactly the same already, so you really don't have to fiddle with that if you're used to Adobe programs. 
So the fill bucket tool on this program is super incredible. There's a setting where you can actually um, have it take the selection that it's already going to pick and it just adds a little bit more color and a little bit wider of a range than it would normally. And that allows you to completely get rid of those like, you know, those little like crunchy white pixels that you get in between your coloring and your line art sometimes. This completely eliminates that and makes it look so nicely done and so professional. The only way um, the only time that I actually needed to go in and touch stuff up with a brush is on the hatching of the uh, Fairy King's nose um, and in his ears and compared to Photoshop where I pretty much have to touch up every area of line art that's inside the face um, this just really sped things up and made it such a more like enjoyable experience versus the very tedious and annoying experience of coloring with a fill bucket in Photoshop. Another feature that Photoshop should really have is the um, gap filler or gap forgiveness kind of slider that they have in the fill bucket settings on Clip Studio Paint. I know that they have a tolerance which is kind of like that um, in the fill bucket and adjusting that can give you better results with how much Photoshop notices but if there's just a straight up white gap in black line art no matter where you set the tolerance it's pretty much going to um, notice that gap and fill outside of the area that you want to be filled, whereas Clip Studio can actually close little gaps um, depending on how you set the slider. Um, so that was extremely convenient. It really sped things up for me and it's something that I really appreciate. Like um, I noticed a actual difference in how I felt coloring this page versus in Photoshop. Like it's it's no joke and especially if you're doing a lot of um, pretty hard uh, coloring like in a comic, um, it will really make a difference for you and how much you're enjoying your drawing. There were moments where I actually forgot I was using a new program and felt like I was just using Photoshop again because of how similar their layer blending modes are and the gradients. It all worked exactly the same, so I barely even noticed I was using a new program, which might be a benefit or a detraction depending on how you feel about Photoshop. Um, but I will say that since this program is one that you can just buy and own forever, um, if you're someone who's low on cash, it might be better to try out one of these rather than getting yourself hooked onto these um, um, subscription programs that Adobe is insisting on using despite everyone um, hating that. Uh, so um, yeah, it's definitely something to look into. I still don't know, honestly, um, whether or not I'll be able to fully move over all of my comic work onto this program. I'm going to have to fiddle a lot more with the line art situation because like I said, there were things that were making the line art take longer and be more frustrating. Um, but other than that, almost every aspect of working in this program was was better for comics than it was in Photoshop. Um, if you're just an illustrator and you don't really need to use comics, um, I still feel like this program will suit you a little better. It's a lot better to draw illustrations in a comics program than to draw illustrations in a photography program, which is what we've all been stuck with when um, it comes to Photoshop. So now I want to show you guys what it does when I hit colorize on this line art. So this is with no hints, it just decided that it was going to have this color palette. And honestly, it it looks really pretty and interesting. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. It kind of looks like um, the autumn section of like a Joann's sort of got oil painted all over my line art. Um, but then I wanted to try it with the hints, hoping that maybe that would look a little bit closer to something I could actually put out as a um, you know finished page or something that I uh, actually want to look like, not just an experiment. Um, so I gave it some hints and I used mostly the colors I'd want, um, but I was you know sloppy with it so that I could still save some time, even with this added step. And then I selected colorize on that layer. It sort of colored it right, but overall it's nothing that I would actually put out as a final piece uh, instead of coloring the normal way. Though, I didn't actually waste this colorized layer. I ended up putting it as an overlay layer over top of the whole comic, and it just made it look subtly more hand done and um, more sort of modeled and pretty. Uh, so I'm actually really happy that this tool exists. I'm just not going to be using it the way that it was uh, intended or originally designed. So final verdict time. I honestly think that Clip Studio Paint is a really good tool and I feel like if I learn to use it better, it really could become my primary drawing program. If you're a comic artist, please let me know in the comments down below what you're using and if you like it. Thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you next time. 
A big thank you to all of my patrons, including Bella Story, Kel Pompong, Cassitarius, Clockwork Construct, Dionysus Hagarillus, Dr. Casket, Elizabeth Alving, Hope Chilsom, Imagine Creation, JJJ, Joseph Copel, Carla Tapia, Cat Did That, Q Did It, Megan Claire, Midnight Doodles, Micah Dactyl, Okamore, Ollie, Rome Espinoza, Rosie Warlock, Sergeant Pendulum, The Artsy Moose, Your Boy ST, and Zoe Stardust.